Okay, we are live. Hello. Hello, hello. Good, we're on. Hey, everybody, Claude Diamond here waiting uh, for my uh, compadre here in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida. Yeah, you want to take a look at what, uh, what it looks like today? Real bad thunderstorm. <laughs> it's inches and inches of a, rain. I have a picture. This is what I woke up to this morning. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I mean, I'm, that's amazing. I'm up here at 10,000 feet, Winter Park, Colorado. Um, thank you for the thumbs up, everybody. Uh, just be woke up to beautiful snow here on Memorial Day weekend. You can't beat and that. I want to talk about success. I want to talk about why losers lose and why success people have this energy, this charisma, this energy, this un, unrestricted confidence. Um, I, I've seen all my life that people who have had, we all have setbacks, but some people always bounce back for some reason. And, it, and I have a story to tell, but I want to show a video first, Felipe, and then we'll get into our dialogue. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. I love your videos. Oh, God. Yeah, you'll like this one here, everybody. <laughs> here we go. Let me do this. Let me share. Um, I'm going to move right to here. Tell me if you can. Whoops, that's the wrong screen. Uh, that's my old Zoom there. And where did my, oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Good. Can you see my screen now? Yes, Felipe? sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Walking barefoot across hot coals, even Oprah has done it. It's a ritual for thousands of followers of famed motivational guru, Tony Robbins. But something went wrong at a fire walk in Dallas Thursday night. More than 30 people were treated for burns. As many as possibly six people with burned feet. I spoke to Melissa Sero, who posted this photo of her burned and blistered foot. My feet were on fire. They, they, burnt, they um, took a water hose and they cooled them off like they did for everyone. Um, but then the, the blisters and the burns were just... Um, overwhelming. The burned feet of other victims look even worse. Melissa also took this photo of the makeshift emergency room set up to treat the firewalk victims. Your feet are burning. What is going through your mind? Why did I do this? Why did I drink the Kool-Aid with all of these other people? Duh. This was an idiot decision to make. Um, I felt that I was smarter than that. <laughs> Cell phone video shows the multitude of fans who were attending the motivational conference as they worked themselves up. <laughs> to do the firewalk. It's supposed to help them overcome their fears, according to Robin's promotional video. I can do that, not on fire. What else could I do? Video posted on social media shows the preparations being made for the Dallas firewalk. The vast majority of people made it through safely and posted photos to celebrate. But witnesses claim the hot coal line was backed up because too many people were taking selfies. There was someone in front of us and someone behind us on their cell phone taking selfies. The first step I took, I was burning. And the second step I took, my other foot burned. And so I don't see how anyone could possibly take a selfie while um, walking on hot coals. A spokesperson for Tony Robbins is defending the fire walk in a statement. Someone not familiar with the fire walk observed the event and called 911 erroneously, reporting hundreds of people requiring medical attention for severe burns. Only five of 7,000 participants requested any examination beyond what was readily available on site. Okay. <laughs> that's one way that's one way to start a, a stream yard conver live conversation um what's your thoughts on that felipe by the way felipe is one of our guts licensees in miami beach florida this is a great salesman a, and a nice guy he, he gives good phone um good husband good father and he thank teaches, you thank you uh, every, he teaches how to sell really well in uh, Florida and everywhere else. Um, and we'll put uh, later on, let's put where, how they can contact you. what do you think of that video, Felipe? I, I like to start things off a little controversial here. And, and on, on Memorial Day, that's, uh, that's actually even more yeah. controversial because, you know, like, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, the, the Kool-Aid is everywhere. You know, it's in, it's uh, in, in sales training and, and, 
in real estate in general, you 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 find it, and it's uh, uh, like you always say, Monday always comes back, comes. So so then you get to choose whether you want to walk on hot coals or you want to take full ownership and responsibility for your life. Don't you think? I don't yeah, I, yeah. Well, the thing about it is, let's go back to the video here. And this is nothing against Anthony Robbins. I've talked. I have a lot of respect. Hey, by the way, he's had some great stuff online. You know, some great videos on mirroring, matching. You know, like the giant, uh, awaken the giant within. And yeah. he's an NLP, neuro linguistic programming kind master of guy. Master persuader. Master got, persuader. Uh, oh, now we're getting to his core reason for success. Anthony Robbins is successful because he's a great influencer, a great communicator, an excellent salesman. He knows how to get in front of people and make them feel wonderful and bring out the best of him in sometimes. Um, but, and this is, uh, I think walking on hot coals is a, a gimmick. I think it's an I'm gonna. I don't want to make a lot of people mad at me who have spent thousands of dollars walking on hot coals. I think it's the. Um, I think it's an unbelievably dumb thing to do. Walking on hot coals does nothing for you. It does not. It yes. Okay, I'll give you this much. It it means that you overcame a challenge. You did something you thought was impossible and everything. That's fine. But so, you know, to me, how, what it's what do we what success really mean? What's being a winner really mean? It's you've got to have a certain set of skills, okay? And so you're overcoming these little mental blocks. Oh, if I can walk on hot coals, I can make cold calls, right? Uh, no, you got to you got to give people skills. You got to practice with them. You got to teach them the art and science of persuasion. Wasting money on gurus walking on hot coals or bungee jump, bungee jumping off bridges and stuff like that. That's not going to that's not going to get you to where you want to be on Monday morning, is it? That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm going to get very emotional about this, which I try. I teach emotion as a way to persuade people, and it can also work against you sometimes. You get emotional because you care, and and because there's it, it, it's a time to you know to to call it for what it is. You know, like motive. Should we keep it clean since it's since it's uh today it's no uh, no this is a family well let's that no let's talk like adults here let's not you okay. let's not be Gary, I don't want to be Gary Vaynerchuk and do f bombs all day long absolutely but like not to, but, I, but I like to talk to adults like adults and talk and speak honestly yeah I think that the the motivation and and it's true it it is a Kool Aid you know like uh, it, it gets you to uh, buy in that that hype. The hype of oh you know like uh, I can do this and all that, but they don't talk about like the real uh, the real things that you need to challenge yourself to do. You know like why and and this is you know like we always talk about this like why do millionaires uh, you know like use their time the way they use versus you know people that are like broke where you know like and we all have the same amount of hours in a day. So challenge yourself to do something. I mean, don't challenge yourself yeah. to walk on hot coals. Challenge yourself to talk to five prospects every day. Challenge yourself to become better on the phone, to wake up early, to take care of your body, to to be a better husband, to be a uh, you know a, a better neighbor, to to give back to your community. Those are the things that people should be challenging back. What do successful people do? We know of people throughout history who have had tremendous setbacks. Okay, they were successful. They started companies. They had setbacks, and then they came back again and again and again. What is the secret sauce, the magic formula that they have? I think it's unbelievable confidence in themselves and their ability. They spend time doing what other successful people do. You know my definition of success, uh, Felipe. Yeah, heard yeah. it, heard it many times, and it's it's very true. You know, take away I, you everything know, you have from me. Give me a phone and I'll be back. In 30 days or less, I will be a one percenter. I will, and I don't care if you're in finance, marketing, Amway, network marketing, real estate, which I know a lot of people are in. I don't care what you sell. But are you selling something that you're passionate about, that you have knowledge about, and that it's practical? Practical meaning it's honest, it helps people, it's ethical, and it makes you a shitload of money. See, I started the bad language. Amen, right brother. Now. Amen. Finally, <laughs> somebody had to say it. Somebody um, had to say it. <laughs> if, I, if I can get a house that I'm in right now for $300,000, and it's a multi, and today, 24 years later, it's free and clear, and it's a multi million dollar house, and I have other houses. 
that I live in. And I want to sound like a bragging jerk. If I, what does it take to be successful? Walking on call, hot calls, going from guru to guru, bogging yourself down in semantics and intellectual uh, gobbledygook, or is it having that, having that confidence, that skill to get on the phone and persuade people to say, you know what? I have a solution to your problem. I can increase your ecstasy. I can remove the agony. These people know that all they have to do is be a good communicator. You see yeah. this in you see this in politics. You see this in business. You know, you may not like the people. You may not like their personality, but they always come back. They're always on top. They go to bed and they don't worry about money and bills. How do they do it? I think that they mastered the ability to persuade, to understand, to uh, to communicate uh, with others, to show empathy, and uh, and it's almost like like uh, mind reading, you know, like being able to to understand that there's and and again I'm, I'm gonna get controversial controversial again. There's it's not like they have a script, but they have a roadmap to success. Yeah, you know, and 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 that's that's what sets you apart from from the from the herd uh, I mean what do you say Claude to somebody that it's you know that it's just getting started that uh, you know like they're probably having a lot of uh, a lot of self-doubt a lot of you know like they feel like a failure they they probably they, they experience setbacks and they're getting ready to quit what would you tell that people today you know people that are like really really uh, having a hard time, and and they not only question their their um, their ability as a, as a salesperson. Sometimes they do, um, they they question their self worth. You know, yeah, so why? How do you why? Why do people question their self worth? Great point. Because they, they're getting beaten down all the time. See, I understand failure. Okay, when you're getting when you're doing something and you're constantly being rejected. I know most people, I mentor people, I've been mentoring people for 32 years, okay? I do it the same way my mentor did it to me. One-on-one, -on -one accountability, face-to-face. -face. Uh, unlike, I think, all the other programs out there. I believe in accountability. Go ahead. And, and uh, we, we actually, the most we do, it's role-playing. And role-playing, it's actually as close as it gets to being with a live prospect. And, and sometimes even better. I believe it, um, one of the principles of success, one of the reasons I'm here today, I believe in education, okay? Um, I know a lot of people are dissing it right now. Gary Vaynerchuk talks down a lot about education and everything. Um, I went to a college. I went to business school. Um, I went to law school. I have a doctorate in law. None of those, and, I, and I, respect, I respect knowledge, you know, but none of, the, none of those esteemed in, in educational institutions spoke to me about how to make money. You know, Harvard School of Business, Wharton School of Business, they, Yale, they, Columbia, none of them teach you how to sell. Exactly. And not even not even uh, the, the Harvard, Harvard Business School. I mean, I, actually, there's a good book on that, uh, Never Split the Difference, where he, you know, he's an FBI hostage negotiator and he goes to Harvard uh, Business School and, and he, beats him up, uh, he beats him up because he's street smart. He understands persuasion at a, at a different level. Now, now Dave has a has a good point there where, he, where you when you ask why do winners always win and he says that they're fearless and I how do you, how do you I, get to be fearless how do you yeah. get how do you get to that place where you can talk to strangers you can make cold calls you can talk to peeling wallpaper for fifteen minutes how do you get there There's two magic words relax confidence but check this out I think that the fear never goes away. You know, like we all, I mean, and, and I, again, I want to, we are all insecure. Everybody's a chicken shit. We all are. <laughs> so, so, and, and whoever says that, it, that, that it's not afraid of anything, it's, it's, they're, they're lying. So we all have fears. It's just what we do when we face that, you know, like, are, are you willing to, to do the things that you need to do, regardless of having fear, the fear of rejection, fear of, uh, um, fear of messing up? fear of you know like of ridicule so, so there's a bunch of things that 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 scares the heck out of us but and that's the difference between you know like people that that are very very successful the one percenters and and the, and the rest of the pack is that they 
learn to master those fears and, and use that as, as fuel to, to use it? I mean, were you like 30, 30 years ago when you started mentoring people, were you like the, at the level that you are right now, were you talking to prospects the same way that you're talking now? Do I have to tell the truth or, or just make people feel good? Sir, you're, sir you're under, uh, you cannot plead the fifth and you're on sodium pentothal, so you have to. Okay. The thing about it is deep down, it's when, here's the way I, why people fail. I'm going to answer it the right way. And then I'm going to answer your question, honestly, of course. But I think when you're getting so much rejection, when you're spending a lot of money on gurus and programs and you're getting a lot of busy work, and uh, most people, I believe, I really, um, I'm a glasses half full guy. I think most people want to make money, take care of their family, pay their bills, put mac and cheese on the table. They don't need a lot of fancy bling bling and stuff. They just want a chance at the thing we all want, some freedom. But they're getting guard, but they're, but the way most people are teaching it, they're teaching, what they're giving them is, is phony baloney motivation. You go out there and walk into the sunshine and knock on a hundred doors. And if a hundred people will release or the people. Knock on another hundred doors, you or, know. That mm -hmm. Or they also do what they do is that they they give him a, a a blueprint for for whatever to 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 succeed in sales. Let's just talk sales training. So they give him a blueprint to fail because they're working on the wrong end of the problem. They're working on the strategies. They're spending too much money on garbage marketing, and they're not doing the one thing that gives them confidence, freedom, and financial success the rest of their life. Per sales, the, the art and science, the psychology and art form of persuading another human being without sounding like a scripted jerk. Uh, that and... And uh, and and one of the things that we that that we do that I, I I really like and why we've been working together for for so long is that you need to understand the why behind it. You need to understand why you know like the the million dollar rule. Why do people make decisions based on emotion? Because sales is not linear. It's it's you know it happens. It, it can really really quickly go sideways. And 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 if you're like, oh, oh, wait a second, just one second. Let me let me see. Oh yeah, Mr. Prospect. Uh, if I was willing to to do that, could you could you close in thirty days? No, it doesn't work like that. You need to understand the the, the psychology of, of of persuasion. Yeah, yeah. You I'm asked a me a great. You're ready. You're passionate about. It. You're like as passionate about me about this. Oh man, the, don't get me started. I'm I, and I got the kids downstairs, so so I, I I'm trying to keep it as clean as I can. But but this. It's time that uh, it's time that you know, and, and and you know, like I've always told you this: the the free content that you put out there, and like doing the live broadcast, the the on your YouTube channel, those three minute videos, or or just simply, you know, like the what we're uh, doing right now. What we're doing right now, it's this better. It's better than paid content that a lot of paid content out there. You and, asked and, me a great. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead, please. What what was the great question? You asked me a question earlier. You said, Claude, were you as confident when you first got started as you are today? The honest answer is no, because I was getting so much. I was spending all my money. I, I worked hard. I had a good job, corporate job, which I detested. I did not want to do anymore. And um, I was knocking on doors. I was mailing postcards. I was doing all the stuff they said. But when I got on the phone, I froze. I was anticipating that someone, I was going to be interrupting somebody. I was an uninvited guest. They were going to talk down to me like a critical parent to a child. I was, you know, and when you get too much rejection, you, there's no way in heck you, you want to make, go and make phone, more phone calls or knock on more doors or spend more money. You give up until the next shiny object. So what we've got to teach people is what are the tools of success? What are the right words to say? What is the right psychology or environment to create? So that we can, so when I first got started, I had a little kid deep inside of me sucking his thumb with a blanket and a flashlight. That little kid, is th he's still inside me, okay? And he comes out every now and then, but I push him back down because I believe in what I'm doing. I speak assertively to people. I don't sound like... 99 and 9 tenths percent of people, when they get on the phone, they sound like losers. They say, hi, Mr. Bosans, can I, uh, could I have three minutes of your time? Boom, right away, what's going through your head, Felipe? 
man, this is another sales call. I have to get rid of this guy. I'm, I'm, I mean, ninety percent of people, what they want to do, they, 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 because they're generally they're good people. They're not, they're not out there to, to manipulate or, or, or to take advantage of, of the salespeople. But, but what they are is that they're conflict averse. They are scared of confrontation and what they think. It's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm. This is a salesman. I have to get him off the line. And, yeah. and next thing you know, you're, you know, you tell him, hey, you know what? I'm in a meeting. And uh, and then and then call me back next week. Yeah. And then the what? Thing about, go ahead. And then you know the salesperson gets like, oh my god, I got a hot one. I'm gonna call him next week, and I'm gonna I'm gonna close him. And they start counting the money, and and guess what? You're you got nothing. You got nothing. You go on. You go on the internet. You guys got selling motivation. Look, John and Mary got rich. They walked on my hot coals, or they bought my magic little amula crystal here, or they sell the religion. And so I'm not going to get too political here. Stuff here. They're selling a lot of stuff, except the one thing that can that can give you the freedom you want. You got to sell a good product or service. That's a given. You've got to be passionate about it. It's got to be a benefit to people. But you've got to use the right words, the right stories, ask the right questions. We call redirection. You've got to learn the psychology of persuasion, not to manipulate people, but to have good conversation. I I'm the only sales trainer in the world who tells people to please fire me. In the first phone call, if I can't help you solve your problem, if it's not comfortable for your budget, if you're not the authority figure, if you don't believe in what I'm selling today, would you do me a favor, Mr. Bosans? Would you please fire me? Don't say you'll think about it. You'll save up or you'll call me back. I'm in business for one reason. I want to make money today. I want to make a sale today. I want to help people. I want to put mac and cheese on the table. I got that from uh, Dave Skullnick here. Yum, yum, mac and cheese for dinner. I'm going to give nice. us your comments. Or questions. Yeah, and you guys out there who are listening. Uh, somebody, you wants, join, somebody wants you to, to show it, uh, actually. Please show me there. Yeah, if you guys want to join, I got the StreamYard link in there. If you have a question or a comment, please post it. Um, I want to say hello to our friends here, our regulars, my good friend Dave Skulnick in San Diego. Francisco Hernandez, how you doing, my buddy? Um, who else is here? Ron Topolansky. Hi, Claude. Please show me. Uh, Ron, just come back on. Just click on the link. We'd be glad to have you join us today, okay? How do you, uh, how do you sell me that pen? I think he means pen. Yeah, um, I think um, it's pen, too. How do you sell a pen? You find somebody who needs, who doesn't have one, someone who needs a pen in their business. You can you make it emotional without being intellectual? See, the the big mistake is no one ever taught anyone to sell. So they have all this product knowledge, they have all these expensive leads, they have all this enthusiasm and motivation after burning their feet on the hot calls. I won't let that go. And then they get on the phone, and who's in control, Felipe? The prospect. Why? Tell me why. Because the prospect has a system. Yeah. And what? Tell us. Let's talk about what is the prospect system. We we're prospects. I'm, I'm a prospect. We... I mean, word of honor. I'm a prospect too. You know, at, at the end of the day, yeah. during during the day, we're we're salespeople. But uh, you know, when we at the end of the day, we're all consumers. You know, like we all need to like you know buy something, use a service whatever it is. And actually I consider myself the easiest sell in the world. You know, like if I like you, if you're doing, if you're following the steps, if you have my, you know, if you understand the, the stuff that we teach, I'll give you my business. No, no questions asked. Just not going to be like a, you're not going to have to go through a million hoops or anything like that. Um, but again, it's the, the prospect has a system today in, in a, in, in a time where information it's, you know, like there's an information overload out there, you know, there's so much information that the prospect already, by the time they reached out to you. Yeah. So <laughs> do I have a tattoo on my forehead that says schmuck? Yeah, that's exactly, that's yeah. exactly how it is. So, so schmuck on my forehead, I'm so easy to sell. If you make me emotional, I say, yes, here's my credit card. Here's the contract. But how do most people sell us? What's uh, why? You know, it's like insanity. Remember the definition of insanity? Yeah, it's doing do the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. And it's just. Yeah. And that's being a schmuck. And that's being a schmuck. OK, the thing about it is if you're having failure, if you don't have. A, a, I'm on fire today because I spoke to several people today. Memorial Day. 
I had people set up appointments and two of them were guys who were uh, middle-aged guys and they're flat broke. They have no credit. They have no money. They're living in their mother's attic, their grandmother's attic, and they fit and they just don't get what success is. Success, can, you can turn your life around and have freedom. I mean, real freedom, real, just to, not to worry about money again. And I'm not talking about all Lamborghinis and everything, but just having some control in your life. The Which is all finance, by the way. It's all leveraged. You know, like that's not, I mean, the real success is what, what you know, like uh, what you have. You know, like you're you're able to like work from home, you know, without worrying or, or stressing about, you know, like a million employees. I was I was actually one of the people, like word of honor, I was one of them that, that bought to the Kool-Aid, you know, had a tremendous <laughs> overhead, <laughs> had, you know, like, so much you know like uh you know like yeah. wasted leads and and uh and and you have no idea and and it's 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 you get sucked into that vortex because you want to keep up with the joneses but that that's that's something we'll, we'll we'll talk later um yeah that's a that's a good one they they go into the presentation mode rather than asking the right questions so that's true you know premature presentation that's a that's a, a, a chronic disease Pre amongst premature intellectual presentations Okay, the minute you act like a goofy clown, like a jerk, is the minute they will treat you like you're trying to borrow money from them. There's a reason why people consistently fail and why winners always win. Winners almost are like mind readers. They know how to use the right words, the right stories, ask the right questions with redirection. There's an actual, just like the prospect has a system, the salesman has a system and and there's a and there's a couple of things to, to that too you know it's about knowing what questions to ask that's the what in it then understanding the tonality like the tone of those questions that's you know the, the thespian part of, of 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 the sales system and then the timing because just because you can ask a question doesn't mean you have to ask it you know like so many times and I, I myself included you know like I've had you know when I was selling like a schmuck you would talk yourself out of a sale. You know, like the prospect already said yes, but then you ask the wrong question and then you open a can of worms. And next thing you know, you get the dreaded, oh, I'll think about it. And all of a sudden, that thing that was magical, you know, all that collaboration goes down the toilet. It becomes confrontational. You go, you go back to your default mode, which is, you know, like selling them features and benefits, dog and pony <laughs> show. And man, you're Did you done. ever meet did you ever meet the salesman who keeps repeating the same intellectual slideshow presentation over and over again, keeps going back? But we know the million dollar rule. I built a very, my wife and I built, and you did too, a very successful business based on discovering the emotional, psychological triggers in people. Why? I ask myself one question every day. Why should someone buy from me? Sign a I, I contract. I don't know. Maybe they should Go ahead. Ask me a question. So Claude, you know what? I, I've seen your I've I'm seen your wrong. materials. I, I've seen your your materials online. You know, I think you have a very good system. This is you know part of the prospect system. I'm gonna smooth you to try to get free information for the next 15 minutes, yep. and then, uh, and you know what? I love your videos. You know, I think I wanna I wanna do this and 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 just Claude, real quick, tell me why should I work with you and not with Joe Blow, the 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 other mentor. Joe Blow is a, um, maybe you shouldn't work with me. I don't really know much about you yet. I haven't really decided if you and I are a good fit yet. So I need a little bit more information. But you mentioned Joe Blow. Um, I, I've heard wonderful things about Joe Blow. You can walk on hot coals. You can talk to his lovely assistants in the Philippines and in Puerto Rico. Um, 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 I mean, why aren't you, you must, did you sign up already with Joe Blow? You must have, right? Well, I'm thinking about it, but you know what? You, I, I want to shop around and see what's where do I get the best the best uh, bang for my buck. You know, well, when you picked up the phone and you spoke directly to Joe Blow, like you're speaking to me right now on on um, on Zoom, what did he tell you? I'm sure. No, he actually, I had to I had to send a message on Voxer, and then he's gonna get back to me in you know a day or two. Said. Oh, okay. Oh, and I'm sure he'll get back to you in a day or two. But when you called me, when you scheduled with me, what happened? How did we get here? Man, I'm impressed. You're here. It's Memorial Day, and and we're talking. Uh, you really answer your own phone, man. You you actually you walk the talk. 
Well, thank you. That's a that's a very nice compliment. Do you, you don't think that's important, do you? In in terms of solving your problems, increasing your wealth and income, becoming more confident and fluid on the phone. I don't. Yeah, I don't suppose that's what you're looking for, is it? Yeah, I want that level of accountability because I haven't I haven't been able to hold myself accountable. I you know like I I get scared when I pick up the phone. I just we, we you know, all like get scared. We all get scared. But suppose there was a way. Imagine for a moment you could you sell used bubble gum, right? Actually, I sell dental floss, and right now yeah, the, oh. the industry is taking a hit. <laughs> oh, you can imagine the guy who sells the used dental floss. Oh, yeah, that guy is <laughs> you sell new. Imagine for a moment you could get on the you have a marketing system where you're not chasing people. There, you're attracting them. They're coming to you. All your calls are con are actual warm calls or converted to warm calls. Imagine you get on the phone and you're having wonderful adult to adult conversations with people. What is this? Can you smell the success? What is success? Can you smell it? Can you taste it? Can you hear it? Can you feel success? What is that like for you, sir? Smells like mac and cheese and bacon. And oh. beer on a <laughs> on a yeah. Memorial Day you're, dinner. You're obviously, you're obviously on a low carb diet. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm. <laughs> uh, okay, off the role play for a minute because that was a great role play. Did I did I ask you for the order? Did I go intellectual on you? Did I read a script or anything? What what happened in that two minute conversation? You were in a you were in a state of relaxed confidence and. Uh, one of the one of the things that we always talk about, um, and this is you know like one of the things we do in guts is it's a question based system. You know when you're asking the questions like a doctor to, with a patient, like an attorney with a client, that is what what sets the difference. And and uh, a couple of things there. Uh, first of all, I was I I try to take control on that call by saying why should I work with you, and you use what it's called a pattern interrupt. Maybe you shouldn't. Okay. We should talk about pattern interrupts. I like that. I like I, that. Term. I think I think we should talk about them because they're very important. But wait a second, why is that important to you? So, but anyway, um, the we the, there was a pattern interrupt. There was also you establish uh, credibility, uh, mm -hmm. scarcity, by saying you know I need to know a little bit more, and then. Three minutes into the call, I was I was being the the salesman, and 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 I, and, and when in, in reality I was the prospect, but it, the 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 situation completely turned around. Yeah, the thing the thing about it is, can we can we get can we buy? You know, Dave posted a uh, a little note here um, on the. Um, yeah, you can see it here. He told me my uh, my daughter. Uh, I always talk about my daughter gave me once the ultimate compliment. She said, "Dad, you're just comfortable in your own skin." I'm a former chicken shit. I form. I uh, I hated the phone. It was a. Cat. We all I, are. We we, I we invented, still are. I invented the phrase that the phone is a cactus. Okay, and here's the thing: you can do all the all the silly little expensive marketing. You can do everything that procrastinates that keeps you from doing the one thing of selling that car, selling that insurance policy, selling Amway soap, doing a real estate deal, getting a contract for whatever you sell or do, okay? Can you get on the phone with enough people every day and have a nice, friendly conversation and, and stay in control and make them so emotional? See, I do something in Guts 2.0. We do something, a very hypnotic form of selling. We get people to want to buy. And and we do it ethically, and we do it because we care and because we provide value in in the service. That's that's important, you know. Like I I, I had a couple of notes here, you know, like because you know I'm I'm a nerd. I love to, you know, read sales books, and then you know, like every now and then I I take a look at the, but uh, but yeah, the first question you gotta ask is like, does the prospect have a problem you can fix? The answer yeah. is yes. You know, if yeah. they if they, the phone is a cactus, that's a problem we can fix. Uh. Does the problem you have, to, you have to ask yourself the question what are the traditional problems or or expectation of joy that the prospect really wants and can you get them to shit talk more than you 
which is hard for a big mouth like me, and get them to share enough information. Do they have the need? Is that need emotional? Do they have the authority to make a decision? Do they have the money to pay for it? Or do they own the house that you want to sell, buy, or rent? Can you get all this information after you set an agenda and you qualify them and you get them into such a hypnotic, emotional state with the words you use, with the five senses, sight, sound, taste, smell, hearing? And can you get them to want to buy and give it to you on a silver platter and say to you, what do you want them to say about you when you get off the phone, Felipe? Well, I, I know exactly what I don't want them to say. It's like, oh, my God, this guy just sold me this. But actually. And what, and, and what happens next when they feel like they've been manipulated or sold or high pressured? What what happens next? Buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse. It's like karma. It's going to come and hunt you down. It's going to happen. He's going to share with his wife, his husband and wh whoever. And then it's it's going to it's going to come and bite you in the back. That's why, you know, like, again, if you. If, if you know that your prospect has a problem that you can fix and then you you get the uh, prospect to agree they have a problem through the questions, the, the redirection, everything that, that we do, then also we need to uh, make sure that the, um, the prospect wants to fix that problem. Money is never an objection to doing business if the emotional need is great enough. If you, you have three beautiful children, God forbid there was no food in the house. What would you, what would you, what would you do? Go home to the kids. Sorry, kids. Dad was scared to pick up the phone. Um, I guess we'll have cornflakes with water again. Oh yeah, no, absolutely no. Hell, hell no. And that's, and that's just because, uh, just like, you know, like we use, we use a lot of, in we use a lot of, uh, uh, imagery in, 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 in guts, you know, like kind of like, like pay, uh, painting a future state of, of, you know, of how success looks like you know, when we always, you know, we use words like imagine for a moment, use the five senses. Uh, I think that it's our responsibility when and this is, you know, like kind of in line with today's topic, it's like, why do winners win and, and, and losers lose? And, and it's just because they're not able to use that as in, in their advantage. You know, if they I'm, if I, if, if I'm, if I'm a failure, if I'm, you know, if I'm broke and, 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 you know, when you have kids, so many, so many, yeah, who, who fucking who, I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, anyway, but, uh, uh, anyway, but like what the point is, this is like so many and, and, and take it from, from guys that went, we went to college with me that they have kids now. And I always tell them that they always talk about like, hey, you know, I, I'm so glad that, you know, like the way you're doing and all that. And I go like, you can do the same because you're probably smarter than I am. And uh, and then they like come up with these excuses like, no, but you know what? I got the kids. And then I go like that. And, and I go like that is exactly why you should, you know, be, you know, like make a commitment to yourself to to become successful. Yeah. You know, you have to you have to get it's take responsibility right but you got to have the skill set too see what most gurus do is they give they give all they give 95 percent uh motivation and maybe three four percent perspiration they don't give you the tools they don't show you know what's my biggest peeve they tell them oh go out there and do this but they don't show them do it yourself let me see you make a phone call let me see you make a cold call warm call follow-up call let me see you do it and how you do it but they don't do that they give all these motivational little stories look what john and mary did look at my jet look i'm standing in front of my jet look look at my beautiful wife and my jewelry and my cars and my red suit they show all that stuff but they don't demonstrate how they did it and that's where you got you've got to give people the tools and the understanding why certain tools work and that's the key to success in persuasion, influence, and sales. That, that's the people I know, the most successful people I know are great communicators. They and, know how to get people like and trust them. And not only that, they're not afraid to be vulnerable, you know, to share, to share the road to success. Because like a, a lot of times, like what what people see, and this is, you know, like one of the dangers of social media, you know, they see a 25-year-old kid. That it's you know posting a picture next to a Lamborghini and all that and or or a private jet, 
and and of course that for the people that are like you know like they're getting started that they want to become good in sales that they they when they see that they get frustrated they're like oh my god i'm 30 i'm 35 years old and look at this guy you know he has all of that but what they don't what they don't see is that everybody has their own journey and we all have to you know like if we have a system and 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 we do the because we need to do the work there's no way around it you have to be willing to 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 roll up your sleeves and be able to like pick up the phone Okay, yeah. that's a, that's a very good one. The million dollar question: How do I make a customer want to buy right now? How to prevent this world call? I have to think about it. The I'll think about it. I got news for you: You're gonna get it anyway. But if you do, if you follow the steps and guts, uh, you know you've set up a strong agenda. Um, the prospect is not allowed to think about it. Should we do one of those? Because that's one of my one yeah. of my favorites. Okay. Who wants, so, you want to be the salesman or or, or the prospect? You pick. Uh, I I rather you're I rather you're the, the the salesman because I I I I can't get enough of that one. So so you know what, Claude? It all sounds great. Your sales system it's 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 impressive. You know, like and 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 you know, like the the whole thing. Uh, I, I'm very very interested. Uh, let me let me do some thinking about it, and and I'll and I'll call you back tomorrow. We have a problem. We got a problem? You're not allowed to think about it. I, I'm sorry? I'm not allowed to think about it? You're not allowed to think. You know what? You're. I think, you know, I've been in business a long time. And please promise you won't get mad at me. By You want me to tell you the truth or just sugarcoat everything? I mean, you've been, I'm really, really enjoying this conversation. But like the fact that so, you uh, tell me I'm not allowed to think about it, I'm, I'm, I'm a little in shock here. Yeah, I, I, I see. I knew you'd get a little mad at me. See, the problem is, sir, you're worried about my feelings. That's why you just said that. Uh, deep down inside, you want to say no to me, but you don't want to hurt my feelings because you know how sensitive I am. I have my little box of crybaby tissues here. The trouble is, sir, you came to me with a problem. We made an agreement at the beginning of this conversation, and we agreed in the agenda that if this isn't, I want to do what's right for you. And obviously, this isn't right for you. So, so why don't we just say it's over? We're still friends. Let me send you a free book. But at this point, do you really want me to call you tomorrow, get your voicemail, chase you, bother you, and then three weeks from now you say, Claude, it's over, and uh, I don't want to do it. Why don't we just be two adults and say that right now? It's over, isn't it? Uh, We're done, aren't uh, we? You know what, Claude? I mean, it's not, I, I, I'll be honest with you. you I know, thought you were. Oh, now you're more honest than before. A hundred and one percent honest. So, so okay. what? I'm a, little, I'm a little confused. Okay, it's not about the money, though, is it? Well, to tell you the truth, off, I off the role play. It's always about the money. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, it is. But uh, but then you get into financing. We can fix it. But but that's the. Uh, it's the the common misconception in in, in sales in general when we're not able or or we don't want to talk about these things up front they come back at a later time when we already are 43 minutes in this conversation yeah and uh and then what's going to happen is that if if the prospect ends with a i'll think about it guess whose fault is that yeah you become success off the role play you did a great role play there thank you you become successful when you take total responsibility for the conversation, for the persuasion of that other person. If you sound like a beggar, if you sound like a little boy or girl saying, mommy, can I stay up late? It's a school night. You have become subservient to that prospect. Guess who? They start to become your mommy and daddy. They start to pick your brain. They tell you when you go to bed or when they get off the phone and when they want to think about it. And you've totally lost control. Would your doctor, your lawyer, or any other professional put up with that nonsense if they're a busy, successful person? What is the image you have to convey in their head? What is the story, the picture, the portrait you have to put in their head? You Obviously, that you are successful, that you are independent, that you have more money than you need, that you don't need to beg them and act subservient. And that you care. And that you care about them and their success because that's nurture. that's key. That's nurture, the, nurture, nurturing and nurture some more. And You've that's got to what is nurturing? Let's talk about that for a second. What is nurturing? Uh, you know, like what that's is, one that's one thing that's one thing I, I, I struggle with. Uh, you know, one of the things that I, I 
I have to, you know, on sodium pentothal, I need to, you know, like do more <laughs> because sometimes when we, when we do, when we know the system, when, when kind of like we, we learn how to, how to mind read, we, we start making assumptions and start quickly disqualifying prospects because it's the easiest route. But it, sometimes, you know, we're able uh, to, uh, you know, when through nurturing and stroking and 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 uh, and and making feel people more okay. That's what uh, you know. That's what actually has a has a great uh, possibility of. We have a record. We have a record. We're simultaneously broadcasting here on StreamYard, by the way. We are on LinkedIn, Periscope, uh, Facebook, um, YouTube Live, uh, Twitch, um, and probably a couple others. And we have a record. We're setting a record today by how many people are listening uh, to this. I hopefully entertaining and informative. And hopefully they're finding value. You know, guys, I mean, if there's anything that you guys want us to talk about or, or, or something that... Uh, that uh, that it's, I mean, put it in the comments. What's your biggest challenge? We can we can role play about it because again, everybody's insecure. Everybody struggles with the same guys. I mean, Claude, we I asked you a question about if you were that good, uh, thirty years ago, uh, and not for the record in sales. No, uh, but uh, but, uh, but let me ask you another question. Do you actually are you a, you know a. Uh, do you succeed in 100% of your calls now that you've been mentoring people for 30 years? Do you actually, my question is like, do you don't make mistakes on a I daily basis? When I screw the, I screw up all the time. Nobody's perfect. We're not talking about a written in stone system here. See, that's why scripts are caca. The scripts are garbage because you think, all people have different needs, different wants, different budgets, different personalities. They live in different geographic areas. There is no one script that can possibly even come close to have to creating the atmosphere of nurturing and adult to adult control. That's, so you have to learn. Go that, ahead. That's a very very controversial topic we, we're getting ourselves into because again, I I'm of the same philosophy, um, but. And, and of course, you know, there's other school that says the, you know, why do people in Hollywood, you know, greatest actors, you know, they, they, they're, they're actually, you know, doing it from performing from a script. But my, my point is this, and because we, uh, in the audience, we have a lot of people that are, you know, like they're getting started. They, they, you know, that they're caring about themselves. They want to become one percenters. What do you tell them? Okay. Scripts are caca. I understand, but yeah. are there are there key questions to ask that everybody that every salesperson should know should understand and they should look for on every single call for example we talked about the money qualifying for money Wh and uh, when when and should the, we talk about money in the in beginning the, in the beginning in the first couple of minutes what's the number one reason uh why people um say no or i'll think about it or anything it's because it's a money issue usually or it's or it's or it's a lack of uh, cre or a lack of credibility here. Um, you you've got to take care of money. Hey, Mister Mister Bosans, you mind if we talk about money? You're trying to buy a home, sell a home, invest in a home. You can, you mind if we talk about your budget for a minute? Could you share with me in round numbers? Sure, Are sure. We'll talk about it in 15 minutes. Just let let no. me know what you got. Uh, no, sir. Could, if you could help me, please. I think I can help you if I have more information right now. Uh, I need to know up front. Have you been to a loan officer? Have you been approved for that? I know you want a million dollar home. Have you been approved for a million dollars? Do you have two hundred and fifty thousand to put down? Do you have a, a do you have a seasoned job history so you can afford to make the monthly payments? Are you the decision maker? See, this is the stuff. When you asked me what I did wrong when I first got started. I would give million dollar presentations. I'd get in my car, drive for hours. I'd buy people steak dinners, meet them for Starbucks for coffee. And they'd say, Claude, God bless you. This is great shit. But, it, and if I could afford it, I'd, I'd sign in a minute. Wouldn't you, like rather, <laughs> wouldn't you rather, and this is the dopey stuff salespeople do because we're so excited. Oh my God, I got someone a prospect finally. And yeah. And we're subservient to the prospect and we're doomed to fail and die broke. This is where I get a little, little maybe maybe too emotional well, about that's, it. That's today's topic. You know, we're talking about winning and and losing. And 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 listen, if 
if you're if you're losing right now to anybody that it's that it's watching this broadcast guess what you know like go go in the mirror and look that's that's yeah it, you, it. you but, want to but, see the reason for your failure the good news, the good, news the good news is that you can fix it I fixed it. I fixed it like, and, and I'm still fixing it. You know, I'm nowhere near where, where I want to be in like in, in, in the success ladder, but I'm at least I'm, I'm taking action and I'm, I'm doing the things that I, that I commit in. And, and again, make a commitment to yourself. You know, like we, we don't miss a doctor's appointment. We don't miss an appointment with a, with a, with a, an attorney when we have to go, or when we have to go and take, and take care of something, when we got to go to the bank to, to, you know, to, but why do we miss appointments with ourselves? When we say, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna pick up the phone for an hour straight, talk to people, give good phone, qualify some leads, you know, like some, and, and next thing you know, you start arranging your desk, you start designing your business card, you start looking on, on Facebook videos of cats, uh, you know, next thing you know, you had a, a terrible day that your, your goldfish died. So, so, you know, there's like, there's like, <laughs> but, uh, Daily, uh, say, you know, the question a lot of people, you know, when a cult, this is how bad some salespeople are. They call me up and say, hi, Claude, how are you today? Oh, uh, and, and, you know, they just say that like it's a script automatic. And, and the trouble is it means nothing. So what I usually do, oh, terrible day. My goldfish died. Goldie's been in our family for five, six years. Oh, <laughs> That's, I, a oh, I, interrupt. That's a pattern interrupt. That's a pattern interrupt. It's how I see. I have, you know what I, you know, people always ask me, Claude, how do you practice this gut sales method. When I get a telemarketer call me, okay, I, I have so much fun trying to take control from them because all they can do is work off their script or go into a go into their intellectual presentation. And I will just have so much, I don't understand. Could you, I, what do you mean by that? Uh, oh, I'm having a horrible day. Uh, you know, and I'll just take control from them. I have one video I put up about two weeks ago. A salesman called me and I ended up selling him. I said, you don't sell for a living, do you, sir? You need some, you know, what's the most comfortable phone call you ever had? And he starts talking to me and telling me, I said, let me send you a free gut sales book. And why don't you schedule with me and I'll help you in sales. You're, you're not making all the money you want to make. Do you? Oh, no, it's pretty. It was so funny. He called me. I ended up converting him. This is how you get good at this stuff. But that's uh, that. It all goes back to and and, and again, I took I, I took some, some some quick notes because it all goes down to the million dollar rule of emotion. You know, people make decisions based on emotion and they justify it on logic later. But really, do you have a problem? Is there is there a problem that the prospect have that you can fix? Yes, the guy sucked at sales. He was very logical. Um, then, does the prospect agree they have a problem? Yeah, they agree to write on that call. Um, do they want to fix the problem? Yeah, the answer is yes. And now the, the the main question to us is like, will they go on a journey with you to fix those problems? Why should so the question I ask myself every morning is, why should someone want to do business with me? What makes me unique? What makes me different from my comp? People always talk to me about competition. Oh, Claude, there's so much competition. I say bullshit to that. There's no competition. Bullshit. You don't you, you totally can destroy your, I have competition. Okay. I'm one guy who lives in California, Colorado, and I, I have good Wi-Fi and some good equipment and I run a pretty, a very successful business. How do I do it against people who have huge advertising budgets, 40, 50 employees, they all kinds of web pages and everything. How do I do it? Because um, of accountability, content. because content, okay. Empathy, stroking and nurturing, make, making feel, my goal is to make people say, you know what? I think he can help me solve my problem. He's, he's accountable. He's going to give value. Okay. You don't have to, you don't have to have the bling, the offices, the fancy, uh, the employees, the and, 20 and, uh, virtual assistants and, or anything and, else. And take it from somebody that, again, it, take it from somebody that, that has been drinking that Kool-Aid for the past two years, you know, like, and, and I had so much, so much overhead. And when I looked at my, you know, my net, you know, like my net ROI, my net profit, you know, like, you know, when I had to sit down with the, with the, with my CPA at the end of uh, 2019 and I go like, holy shit, you know, we spent that much money. D did we get to like, we didn't, we didn't even get to keep 
nearly what, what we were thinking about. And it's because of that, because of the that marketing strategy and because of um, not taking not taking responsibility, not being self accountable and not having the into, skills. Yes. You've got to have the skill set so that and the practice so that when you get on the phone, magic happens. Okay. That that's the beauty of when you make a sale, it's the second best feeling in the world. When you're providing for your family, paying your bills, putting mac and cheese on the table, you like that second best thing. I know. Yeah, that. yeah. That's the pattern to move. Let's get to let's answer some of these excellent questions. Alexander Ryan Bailey, I love the picture of you and your wife uh, there. What a beautiful picture. I do lease options. Your stuff works well in real estate investing. I am also a loan officer. Can this gut sales system be used in any platform? The answer is yes. Answer is yes. I designed guts. I started out guts in real estate, but then I saw it apply in the auto industry, in the finance, in uh, loans, in insurance, you name it. It's all about human psyche, human behavior. How do I get a human? You know what the definition of marketing is? It's called attention. How do I get someone's attention? How do I get credibility with that person? How do I get them to want to say yes or give me another appointment? or give me enough information so I can fire them in one phone call. When you do that, you feel good about yourself. Making money feels wonderful. I'm 10 feet above the ground. I'm like a little kid. When I make a sale, I do a real estate. I run upstairs to my wife with the paperwork. Honey, let's hang it on the refrigerator. Look what I did today. I'm like a little kid so with that's that. That's the second best feeling in the world. Success is my oxygen and I've got, it's a drug. I could have retired so many years ago, but I love selling. To me, it's a game, it's a gauntlet, it's a challenge. So it can, uh, Alexander, great question. It can be used in any others. Let's see, uh, he mean, uh, in any platform in industry? Absolutely. We got, Felipe and I joke around about use dental floss, use bubble gum, car sales. Anywhere, uh, anywhere. Anywhere. Let's see, Dave Skolnick, why are we talking today? Redirect and get them to share their needs and greets. What is a, let's, uh, Felipe, I'll give that to you. What, uh, um, one of the first questions I always ask people, sir, um, why are we talking today? What would you like to see happen? What are we, are we gonna reach a decision at the end of this conversation? Could you do me a favor and fire me? Or could we make a decision that I, I can help you solve your problem or make more money? Um, and we can make a commitment to move further. But can you say no to me today, sir? Could you do me that favor? Absolutely. I'll definitely do that. And that's that's how you set up a strong agenda. It has all the what? components. It has the components. First of all, um, it has the, you know, like the reason why you're calling. And, and of course, we can use a pattern interrupt. You know, like I, you have a problem. I have a solution. There's many of them. Also has the permission to say no. Because that is just relieves so much pressure out of it. When you tell the prospect that they're allowed to fire you, they feel in control. And, and okay. then it, it becomes an adult to adult conversation because this is not going to be a, a 30 minute painful session where this guy is going to, you know, like try to close me no matter what, which is not what we do. Yeah. The thing about it is there's so much understanding human behavior. When I say to you, why are we talking today? I force you to redefine the reason we're talking, okay? I, get, I use a thing called redirection, which is just a form of reverse psychology. Mr. Uh, Mr. Felipe, if, you, if we could solve your problem, you don't want to you don't want to make a commitment today, even if we could save you money, get your house sold, uh, get you to uh, get uh, remove the problem. Um, that's not something you want to decide today, is it? Boom. I mean, I'm, if I'm going negative, I'm going negative to make you go positive. Positive. That's redirection. It's a skill. It takes time. It takes practice. You get the prospect doing all the work. For, imagine for a moment. The prospect gives a presentation. The prospect qualifies themselves. The prospect gives you a commitment whether or not to, you're going to do business. The prospect gives you the order instead of you nagging them. Don't we hate the sales guy who says, oh, the price goes up on Friday. Or, oh, it's a, we're running out of inventory. And aren't it's we called sick the impending event close. And yeah. it, it was actually last time it was used was in 1968 by Sandler. So yeah. anyway, um, so yeah, it's, 
It's true. I mean, it's, uh, it, you know, we need to understand that there's a system and there's a system for, for everything. There's a system in, in if you want to take full responsibility of, of, of your income on, or, and, and, you know, really take a, a, an honest assessment of where you are now and where you want to be. Because if you say like, if you're making right now, you know, like 2000 bucks a month living with, in your mom's basement with her 10 chihuahuas, and you say that you want to make a million dollars by the end of 2020, I mean, you probably need to reset your expectations. You need to like reverse engineer it and, and say like, okay, I need to make this, this income. What does it take to do it? Make it five, 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 five. phone calls, five follow-ups, five voicemails, five offers every day. If, uh, if you can use the gut sales method, no matter what industry you're in, and speak to five people, make five offers, beg them to fire you. By the way, what do you think goes in the mind of somebody when you tell them, hey, listen, if this isn't right for you, you don't have to tell me you'll think about it, fire me. Okay, but the problem will still exist. What would you like to do next, sir? Boom, you're in control. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason why There's a reason why we do this. We have a, oh, we, we gotta answer these questions because we're running out of time here. Um, let's see. Uh, Joe McCall and Claude Diamond equals hey guy. Money. Great, great program. For Joe's a good guy. Um, uh, uh, Alexa says significant books you read. Um, oh my gosh. Um, rules of well, guts. Rules of guts, man. Just get it, and and it's gonna it's gonna open the door. Also, how I raised myself from failure to success in sales. Great book. Very, very fun read. And um, uh, here's a few. Whoops. Fell oops. off. Um, here's, let me see some of my books here. Um, we love, I like Cialdini, uh, the influence. I like Gary, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk wrote a book, not, not crush it. Thank you. Economy. Um, uh, the, uh, Robert Cialdini is one of my favorite cause he goes over basically the six psychological triggers and stimuli. Um, Dr. Eric Byrne. Um, I, I, I have something to say, Claude, because I, I've been, I've been in that spot where, where you're trying to look at the silver bullet on like, what's the next book? What is the next program that you have to read? And, and, you know, like, I, again, it's great. You know, I'm, I, I'm a nerd. I read every day and, you know, like at every, every day, you know, like at least 10 pages of book, but it has to be, it has to go hand in hand with application, with practice. Sales is like mixed martial arts guys. It's, it's a contact sport. You need to practice your craft and you need to be able to, it's fun. Dave Skullnick says here, Claude will never retire. You know why I'll never, why would you, why would you want to stop doing something? I've got so many friends. Uh, Warren and, Buffett is 89 and he's still investing. He's still the guy's like sharp why, as a tag. Why, why do people, he loves it. Why would you work is never a four letter word. You know, it's so much fun. You know, we, my wife and I make donations right now with the, you know, we, we're members of the Lions Club. We're on the board of a theater. Um, we have so many different things we can do. And when you have more money than you need, it is so wonderful to be able to help other people, especially now the pandemic. We, we got a food bank that we're supporting, um, we, an organization we belong to. We, we're up in the mountains here in Colorado. People are hungry, okay? And you know what? Uh, one of the most wonderful things in the world is be able to write a check, not even think about it, and know that some kids are not going to go to bed hungry tonight because the you were third, able. Is the third best feeling in the world. Yeah, be able to you give know. back and and be and 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 you know like that. See how you can impact the lives of others. But before yeah, so you, you do that, yeah, you have to take care of yourself. Charity begins at the home. But the thing is, people, they're all the media is all talking about, oh, people are unemployed and the jobs are going to go away. We're in the greatest free enterprise capitalistic system in the world. Anybody can start a business if they have the secret powers of persuasion. I don't care if it's an eBay business, real estate, bank loan, insurance. You can, this is the country where anybody can, why does everybody come to this country from all over the world? Why? And because it's it is it is the truth it is it is what it is like the the american dream it's it's true and I'm take it from somebody that that got here like 12 years ago again i don't i don't really talk about too much about this because i you know it might come off as oh he's that, trying to he's trying I to that was a Brooklyn accent you have yeah <laughs> no but it's uh 
it, it's true, you know, like, uh, and, and by the way, uh, for the record, you know, like in today's, we have to be willing to, to be thankful for, for those who, who sacrifice their lives for, for, for what, what we have here, you know, like this freedom that, that a lot of people take for granted that, you know, like people are like, you know, that they complain, they whine, they bitch about like the economy and all that. It's way worse in other places in the world. And I, I talked to, you know, I talked to my, my friends, you know, people I went to college with, I, my family down, you know, in South America, and, and they're really, really struggling there. You know, like it's not, uh, it's a serious thing uh, when they have to, you know, like do that. And, and, and when, what, you ever heard of the term first world problems? That's what we have here. You know, like it's, and, and yeah, it's true. You know, people are losing their jobs. But where there's where where ninety nine percent of people will see problems, and they will twenty years from now they will blame COVID nineteen for everything bad that happened in their lives. There's gonna be that one percent that took that took responsibility, that you know, like that they will hundred percent accountable for themselves for for their results, and they're gonna come off way better off. The people that that understand, okay, what's the one skill I can work today that is gonna set me set me apart. I, I personally think it's it's the ability to 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 persuade in an ethical way, of course, in an ethical way when you really have something that you're you're selling that it's of value, not dental flaws, not some bullshit program, get rich quick scheme, none of that. But but yeah, that's that's what uh, that's the truth. I read about a guy in uh, Colorado in Denver the other day. He started a drive-in movie theater. Now, when I was a kid, that was a big deal. We'd get in the station wagon. I'd wear my little pajamas with the feet and, the, and everything. And mom and dad, and we'd go there and watch the popcorn dance with the hot dog and everything. And, you know, and then drive-ins went away, okay? And this guy started, and he's packing them in because people can go in their car. They can socialize. They got something to do, someplace to go while everything else, Disneyland, movie theaters, everything else is closed. You know, when, when nature abhors a vacuum, okay? So we got the problem with the, the restaurants and socializing and everything. They're going to be smart people. Maybe, you know, drive-ins are going to, are, are doing very well, by the way, right now, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Did you, have you seen the lines by the Wendy's and the McDonald's and everything like that? Yeah. Like, do you think they're selling more food than ever because people can go out or Grubhub? How are they doing now with people delivering food? Instacart, you know, like you have so much people like, you know, like doing it. Um, and again, it's a, it's a good. Um, How about Amazon? How busy is Amazon right now? They're, I mean. <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, I mean, they, they, but, but again, it's, uh, they're busier than ever, which tells you that, you know, if you have one idea, one good idea, you can. And, and, and you really put like, uh, you know, like real effort to it and, and you and you're confident that, that you will succeed, that you're going to you're going to be successful. That's it's, it. There's no way around it. But you got to exactly. do the work. Exactly. And the easiest way to success is be a master of persuasion, of gut selling, learn a better way to sell, get the right product or service, whether it's real estate or whatever you want. Get set up a marketing. We, next time you and I have to talk more about marketing, you know, my my feeling, uh, and I don't want to, we got to get off this here. We've been on for over, I told you an hour and it's an hour and eight and a half minutes. Already. Hey man, it's, but it's, it's worth it. And, and you know what? We can, we can talk about marketing and take it from, you know, you always talk about yourself about uh, you're a recovering, uh, a recovering attorney. I'm a, re <laughs> I'm a recovering, uh, you know, massive uh, blanket marketing guy. And, uh, and, you know, like, of course, we still do a lot of that and, and we we find some success because we have systems in place in, in, in my company to do that. But I can tell you the quality of, of the conversation when it's when it's a, a, a warmer lead, a, 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 when you do virtual attraction, there's just no, it's a night and day difference. The other thing we can, Hello. when we talk next session, it's a lot of busy work. So all those things, guys, dialers, SMS, I, I own a, a, a CRM company and I can tell you it's so much busy work that you have no idea. So well, it's, a, yeah. it's the thing about it is, do I need to make up a list of very poor, low quality leads that cost me hundreds or thousands of dollars? Or do I want to attract warm leads, people who want to talk about my product or service, who do want to schedule with me? Isn't it better to attract leads 
through social media content, the compelling contemporary marketing. And so that you have three, four, five really good phone calls, good appointments every day, instead of chasing hundreds or thousands of garbage leads every day. Absolutely. That's that's how I it works. That's it. We are, we're clear on the why behind it. Uh, on our future, on our next session, we can talk about the how, how we go about doing it. And I think it's through content marketing, what you do, you know, like what you do on a, on a daily basis and uh, through delivering value. You know, we have exactly. to be, and once that phone rings, you need to know what to, what to do. And exactly. And deliver, talk about delivering, um, um, delivering quality to people. Um, I have a free book here. Uh, the, this is the first book I wrote, The Mentor Teaches Success. It's a rags to riches story about this guy. Bad job. He's broke. He meets the little mentor in the park. Mentor teaches him and takes him all over the world in his private jet and everything. And he teaches him the principles of success. This book, I sell it all day long. It's free for you guys. If you go to my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com. And um, Felipe, let me give you the last word. How does somebody, this man is, this is not only one of the nicest men I know, but this is a great salesman. Get, how do you? How do they get hold of you, Felipe? I mean, it. Yeah, I'm easy to find. I, I, you know, I we we practice what we preach. You, I answer my own phone. It's three zero five seven four one forty three fifty. You you call me there. You text me, and I'll and and we can have a quick call. Uh, I, and or you just look me on on Facebook, Felipe Osans, and just like my my name is there. And uh, again, I'll be happy to connect. And uh, and just remember why why are we talking today? You know, let's yeah. be intentional about it. Let's just be intentional. If, if we're going to connect, let's see. Uh, um, I would like to, you know, like have those quality conversations, you know, like, you know, the, um, what would they like? I want to hear more about what would they like to see happen at the end of those calls? You know, like uh, how does success look like? Thank you, Felipe. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we set a record today. I can't believe how many people are on all these different systems. Um, you guys have a wonderful, enjoy the rest of your Memorial Day weekend. And what I always say at the end of all of my calls, nobody deserves, deserves success, success more than you. Take care. Bye-bye, you. You. everybody. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Happy Thank Memorial you. Day. Bye-bye.